Hey there YouTube, it's not unusual that I would do a little kind of autobiographical intro. Would this work with the horse? You just clip the uh, clip the horseshoe on plastic like that? I don't know. See, I don't take... I'll pass this on, but with questions to my horse friends. Do you think that would work? A movie I saw. I guess they changed the name of it. It was called The Devil We Know. By the time I got it, it was called Dark Waters. They changed the name. And there's Carol. We had a routine visit. Nothing to do with the COVID uh, yesterday. And um, good news is the Subgenius documentary is rippling out somewhere. Not that I've seen it, but you see I use a Bob Dobbs head for my avatar. I like to not take myself too seriously. This, to me, helps, right? I go by Quaker also, though, with the hat thing and stuff. So where I'm at with this channel, now that we've done that part of it, is there's a lot of auto bio going on. But there's also some skills building and where we were in the last few videos, and I might as well just continue with that, is tying together... You could say topology and database management. You have like a graph database on the surface where you can travel around and see stuff. And then there's kind of this internal tables, SQL based, where the data actually lives and kind of not that readable. <clears throat> not that readable a form. You have to like decode it in some way to make it more visual or more like conceptual. So I've been building um, more animations. Let's look at my most recent here. I generate these POV files that are for ray tracing and then I get a ray tracing out of that. So those are each folders that I'm filling up in code. Like I have code here. I have scripts going. That's um, where I can change the header. But I have little scripts going where I can make these movies, right? Let's see, animations and so forth. I call them Flextegrity scripts. And I have other stuff going on in Spider related to the same projects where I'm making stuff happen, right? So what I get are frames of film, you could say, but they still have to be rendered through this open source machine called POV Ray. And out of that, I get these various animations, which I will now show you some of them. For example, Anim 6. This is like um, a two-frequency flextegrity matrix. Everything centered at CCP centers, but the icosahedra pulse in terms of size and are connected by these like rubber bandy, but also like they push apart as well, right? So they pull and push, right? There's a lot of tension compression experimenting going on in, in the silicon forest with some of these as materials, which is what this paper is also about. It's about, it's, this is just for helping with the ray tracing and conceptualization, but then the actual paper talks about load bearing or it, it suggests that there are load bearing applications of any of these lattice structures, right? And the ones that Sam Lanahan has been working on are of a specific category or class, which we call flextegrity, right? Because there's a lot of versions out there, prototypes, one of which is C60, which is not not exactly the carbon molecule. It's, it's an allusion to, as a brand name to that chemical. To, to, to Buckminster Fullerene, but C60 is spelled C-X, or sorry, C6-X-T-Y. Okay, I uh, just wanted to assure you that even though it seems like these are, you know, curriculum for reform, which is a lot of what goes on in this channel, is kind of a boring molding, molding with clay. It's like we're wanting to I'm wanting to brainwash myself these days into knowing a lot more statistics, right? So here's all me diving into like t-test and 
you know, the Z curve and, you know, all the jargon, all the hypothesis stuff. And, you know, I've gone through it before, but I'm a philosophy focused guy at Princeton and the physics people around me, though, were learning APL, which I fell in love with. And I've always been on this sort of APL kick, you could say, because Python, it's partly the interactivity of a REPL, R-E-P-L. By the way, I'll speak of REPLs for a second as I wind up on this particular one. I'm passing on to, to people about Tetra volumes, right, in the form of a Python online REPL, it's called, which means you can run it yourself. See here, it's loading, and then people can do comments, right? And this person's like, wow, that's some interesting stuff. I don't know how I haven't come across this before, right? So because it's pretty obscure, honestly. There's our S module with the plain net. And what we're doing in this particular REPL is computing the volume of a tetrahedron given at six edges. But we're doing, doing it with this different um, formula that presumes we're interested in tetra volumes. Tetra volumes means that our unit of men mensuration is not a cube in the first place. It's a tetrahedron. And how we think of it is somewhat shown in this picture. I kind of do some explication amidst comments here to further clarify what the REPL is about. So these kind of geometric skills that involve polyhedrons, colorful, you know, visualizations and stuff, I want to marry that with kind of the dark data mining where you may not really, you know, the other way that data comes to us, like more tactile or visceral, maybe we could say. I'm alluding again to stuff in synergetics, Bucky Fuller's magnum opus, a philosophy, I'd say, and a language, really. It's, it's long in that sense because he's trying to give enough, like, data points for something that's very remote, right? A lot of examples, and also you can see evolution through time, how it's changing sl slowly, the direction of discovery. And I'd say since his passing, Bucky's, um, like the S module, the E module, these kind of things, they did continue to evolve, thanks to David Kosky in particular. And this also brought me to collaboration on these kinds of sculptural lattice graphics, right? And what I was saying before was that, you know, C60 is a load-bearing material as well as something that I'm just trying to get, there we go, make it more of a, a cartoon in my case, right? Because I'm, I'm sort of a Platonist here, just teaching the pure geometry, you could say the Pythagorean, without the empirical content that you might be interested in. But then I allude to the empirical content. So it's not like I'm, I'm I look up to it. I look up to what it takes to really exist versus just imagine, right? I think to truly exist is a higher thing, even if it's only temporary in some sense. In Western culture, there's been a tendency to look down on that which exists because it's so temporary, whereas we have this exalted access to something eternal in our thinking, we think. But flip it around, I think if you manage to manifest physically in the universe that's that's really saying something so platonist as a platonist hats off to uh those of you out there who uh, are really into making stuff that's not that i'm not by the way this is a craft in itself making these jupiter notebooks but it's not hammer and nails really if you know what i mean all right good chatting with you talk to you soon